Despite Monday being a negative day for Mullen, it has at least given shareholders a much clearer perspective on the extent of the shorting of the stock. Send it to the freaking moon, idiot. Hi again, everyone. I hope you're doing well. So it's pre-market on Tuesday. It's about 6.30 a.m. in New York time or 8.30 p.m. if you live here in Australia. The day's almost done. Anyway, um, you know, obviously yesterday's trading for Mullen was not what we wanted. Uh, you know, the stock dropping by about 12% uh, when there was the short selling restriction trigger in place. Uh, we were kind of hoping it would get like a soft landing sort of day. Uh, but obviously what happened was there was still a lot of downward pressure on the stock. Now, What's quite interesting is some of that downward pressure could have actually been pre-existing shorts returning stocks and buying in while the price is low. Perhaps they were factoring it and that might be a bit of a bounce back after that, um, which obviously didn't happen yesterday. Um, now, the reason I say this is because if you look at the short starter now, um, going into Monday, the sh percentage of the float short according to Fintel was 305%. However, now that they've had a day for you know the time it takes for trades to settle, to pass through, that number has dropped down uh, drastically. It's now only about 12.2%. Uh, and we can see the short borrow fee is still 120%. And interestingly now, there is actually 300,000 shorts or stocks available for shorting on the market. Um, even though, you know, you can't effectively do a, a day trading short play at the moment uh, in a profitable way. So it one silver lining, I suppose, of yesterday's sell-off was that there was this... Um, unveiling like the extent of the short situation so with 12 percent, that does put the stock at technically highly short but it's actually only just over that 10 percent threshold so um the number of shorts in the stock at the moment are not that high uh which could be a sign that even the shorts are starting to back off a little bit thinking that like pay, perhaps they've pushed the stock down a little bit too far uh time will tell and obviously tuesday because of yesterday's sell-off tuesday is now also going to have the short seller restriction trigger in place. So there will be that um, inability for shorts to uh, basically do a short-term trade, um, being the stock going down, at least on market. You can still do it off exchanges and you know through CFDs and things like that as well. But you know generally the shorting which influences the stock price isn't going to actually be happening. So that's one good thing to come out of yesterday. Now, one other thing that I did want to address in this video is um, I had an interesting question in the um, comments of my uh, video I did yesterday in the aftermarket of Mullen. And the question was basically, now that Mullen has fallen back below a dollar, does that mean it's now going to be um, delisted again? And the answer in short is no. Um, so basically, because Mullen was able to get its stock price back up above the $1 mark, it actually um, overwrote the delisting threats that they had before so they had like this lingering one um which isn't as serious but if your stock falls below a dollar um for a meaningful period of time you can get issued a, a delisting warning and mullen had several of those um but you know you can actually apply for 180 day extensions twice generally speaking so you can go basically a year with your stock below a dollar but where mullen did get into a little bit of trouble is that their stock had fallen below 10 cents um, and if you're below 10 cents for 10 consecutive sessions, uh, the NASDAQ can actually issue an immediate delisting threat. Um, and, you know, the way to get out of that is you have to actually go before a tribunal and um, show calls while you're below. And then as well in that time, you have to actually correct your stock price. So Marlin did get into that really dangerous territory of falling below 10 cents. And that's why they had a more serious delisting warning on them. Uh, however, that's now all cleared up. We were back above a dollar. So even though, sorry, we're back below a dollar now, but that doesn't actually mean that NAS, that the stock is facing a delisting. Um, yeah, anyway, so I just thought I'd clear that up. So we're heading into Tuesday. It should be interesting now, now that we've got a clearer picture on the shorts in the stock and there's going to be no like meaningful shorting done in a day trading sense on Tuesday, um, we might actually get a bit of a, a rebound. Now, I say this somewhat optimistically because if you look at the pre-market, we're down by almost three cents at the moment, but it's still very early days. Um, it's a very low volume session. Uh, so it'd just be interesting to see. I I don't think we're going to have as drastic a sell-off as we did yesterday, but you know, in saying that, Mullen has a way of um, disappointing its shareholders in that sense. Uh, anyway, what do you guys think is going to happen with Mullen on Tuesday? Is it going to be um, a day where we're actually finally able to... Uh, rebuild and 
get back above that one dollar mark or do you foresee more people looking to exit due to the frustrations they have with the stock um share in the comments below also if you see this video and there's been any like news updates drop it in the uh comments because you know sometimes the first time i hear about something is actually in the comments before i actually get a notification so yeah anyway um have a great day may the markets trade in your favor and hopefully we can make a bit of money on mullen eventually cheers